back with us and it is just past 4 30 on wednesday and you know what time that is it's one of uh, my favorite segments it's one of my favorite times to dig into the scripture dig into life start dealing with some of the issues is having one of uh i think we're now almost, or we're friends robert cook how are you doing robert I'm doing good, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. I- I'm digging your necklace today. I really am. Is that, is that uh, like, I can't really see it high def, but I'm, I'm digging the necklace. And, w- and what's the t- t-shirt? Uh, the t-shirt's a drum set that says stick with Jesus because I play drums. Stick with Jesus. There you go. You learn a little bit more about Robert Cook every time you watch and uh, you get a little bit. And so how long have you been playing the drums? Since I was 11 and I'm 46 now, I'm not a mathematician, but a long time. <laughs> you've uh, you've put some times into the uh, drums, and uh, and that's awesome. That's an amazing passion. Maybe sometime when you come on the show, we'll we'll set up a drum set, and maybe you can uh, rock out with us. Maybe you that's can just awesome. hang out. The, uh, well, that's perfect. But uh, let's continue uh, to talk a little bit about what we talked about last week. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you mind giving them a little bit of a refresher of what we talked about last week? And then we'll jump right in. Yeah, we were discussing the truth about porn and how we get conditioned from a very young age by seeing very uh, sexually explicit uh, pictures and ads and commercials and everything. And we start by the time we're a teenager, we've seen hundreds of thousands of these images and our mind gets conditioned that this is the acceptable way things are, that it's okay, that it's not bad. And, you know, we were just talking about how God sees that and how that sexual sin separates us from God and, uh, you know, really messes with our life. And it's something that, you know, when we sin, like, sexually, it's against our own bodies, the Bible says. Everything else is outside the body, but uh, when we commit sexual sin, it's like uh, sleeping with a prostitute, you know, and so it's, it's very important, especially when uh, porn is just rampant in a billion and billions and billions of dollar industry that's just really destroying uh, marriages. And it starts when these young people get addicted to it, you know, and it's just really hard to break that habit. Uh, and I uh, thanks for talking about last week. And I really want to dig into this. But can you tell us a little bit more about like scripture, what scripture says? So, so many times we have these human opinions and this is bad. This is what is what does scripture really say about this? Well, I wanted to read something out of Galatians because a lot of times when I talk to young people, they think they're not hurting anything when they say, well, you know, it's just friends with benefits and things like that. But I wanted to read how God views that little friends with benefits thing that they got going on. So I'm going to read out of Galatians uh, chapter 5. I'm going to start with 19 and just see where God lumps this sexual sin uh, with these other sins. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And when you look at that, he's lumping the sexual sin and adultery and things like that with witchcraft, drunkenness. And so God doesn't see it as some little innocent sin that's not hurting anyone because you're doing it and it's your body or, or so you think, you know, God God is, sees it as an extremely serious sin, you know. And so that's where we should focus on when we're, we're talking today. Keep that in the back of our minds that this is how God sees the sin that we're talking about today. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's something that uh, there's a seriousness to it. There's a level of, of heaviness to it, especially how uh, reading that scripture and uh, and I know even in my own life, you can push things to the side. Ah, it's not that bad. Uh, you know, if I, even a, even a little, a little lie, you know, like it, we, we, we're really good at pushing that sin that it's just not, it's bad, but it's not that bad. And, and that right. continues to distort our view. Right, absolutely. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about how, speaking of distort, how the porn really distorts our view of, of women uh, like how to do, why does it do that how does it do that distorts our view of women or uh, in in vice versa when, when girls look at it how does it distort the view of men or other women all that kind of stuff uh, absolutely um well first of all in, in my book i called it photoshop reality which is like an oxymoron uh because when they take a picture what the computer does with a couple of clicks of a mouse is they tan there's no tan lines the girls uh look perfect They take away any fat, any curves that they don't want to appear. They can add curves. Uh, And so when we look at that, we think that every girl is like a 36, 24, 36 nymphomaniac, 
you know, and that's not the case. That was all done uh, pretty much for male ego uh, with the click of a mouse, you know, and it distorts uh, a man or even a young boy's, uh, you know, idea image of what a girl should look like. You know, they're, they're not thinking about reality. They're looking at, you know, somebody's made up version of reality. And that messes with them when someday, you know, if, we, if you hold true to uh, what God wants for you and you meet a woman someday and you're going to get married and you have been viewing porn or something, you're going to expect her to act like the things you see in the video. You're going to expect her to look like the video when she doesn't have any clothes on. And that's not possible because even the girls in the magazines don't look like the girls in the magazines without help. You know, uh, so it just messes with you. And I know, it, like, even in the book, it talks about, like, uh, our um, imagination as a guy is that we walk home and uh, our woman's there, like, waiting for us. And, like, we, we distort all these kinds of views uh, that we think that the perfect woman is going to be like. Correct? Yeah, we expect a certain level of behavior. And, uh, you know, when you're viewing porn... Uh, in our minds as we grow up to it and it like I said it distorts it you think every woman's waiting to answer the door naked for the mailman or wants you you know to videotape the sexual encounter and share it with all your friends or wants a threesome with you and everything and that's that's not what the case you know all that does is ruin any real chance of having a, a healthy relationship with your future wife uh, uh yeah, great stuff, interesting stuff, stuff that we need to talk about, and I'm glad that we're talking about it. Uh, but uh, we are going to talk more about this coming up next. We're going to play a song, and then we are going to uh, wrap this up. Uh, so much more to talk about. I, I want to add a little bit about selfies, talking a little bit more about uh, the, the, what photo shopping does, so much more, but also the hope uh, that, that God gives us. So, so much more to stick around. We got one song, and then we will be right back. Chasing one in a million, and then more with Robert Cook right after this song. <laughs> 